Now, first and foremost, I want everyone to be safe while we hang out here today, so please take a moment and put on your face masks. Hello everyone, welcome back. I cannot even tell you how good it feels to be sitting in front of the camera today. <laughs> I have missed this so much. It feels like it's been a billion years. It's only been a month. I had to check. I went back and looked at the channel because I thought there's no way it's only been a month. Yeah, it's only been one month, but it feels like a billion because this has been just absolute insanity, hasn't it? I mean, if you told me back when I was making my last video, which was a Super Bowl watch party 60s makeup tutorial, because I was going out with my family to have fun and watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> if you had told me at that point, like, hey, and then as soon as you're done with this video, just make sure you start putting together your quarantine content, I would have been like, the what? I mean, it's just, it's just bonkers. But all I wanted to do was just get out here today and talk with you all and check in and make sure you're all doing okay. And I wasn't really sure what type of content would be like correct <laughs> or appropriate right now. And then <laughs> the Oblong Box Shop, which if you are not familiar, is a clothing company um, that's really great. They came up with this idea that March 31st would be quarantine ween as just kind of a time for everybody to be excited and happy and about something that they love, um, which if you a spooky bitch like me, you love Halloween. And it was funny because not even like a week prior to that, I had joked with Taylor and was like, if we're going to be stuck at home, I'm going to be like decorating the house, pulling out Halloween decorations and things to make myself happy being at home all the time. So when I saw that Oblong Box Shop post, I was like, oh my god, yes, quarantine ween is exactly what I need in my life. And I think it's probably what a lot of you need in your life right now too. So we're gonna have ourselves a little quarantine time. I've got my po mug out. I brought out my Halloween decorations just for all y'all so we can sit here with our spooky decorations. Got my lights kind of low. I just wanted this to be something cozy and familiar and nostalgic because I think we could all benefit from that right now. So what I would love is if you would just pause the video right now, grab yourself a cup of tea or a cocktail or your morning coffee or whatever you want to drink. I went on Instagram and asked you all to give me some Halloween questions to talk about and they are all in this jack-o-lantern. So um, I'm just gonna hang out here and go through these questions and we're just gonna talk about Halloween for a little while in March and it's gonna be great. Let's get started. Thank you to everybody who put questions in on Instagram. <laughs> okay, first one was best Halloween superstition or tradition. Um, so for me, I think my favorite kind of idea or like superstition, I guess, around Halloween is that it's the one day of the year where the dead can return to earth, right? And I know that that can be like kind of a, a like a spooky like oh my god ghosts i don't know if i believe in ghosts i don't know i've actually not really ever come to terms with whether or not i do i actually i have a good ghost story maybe i'll tell that here in just a second um but i definitely believe in like spiritual energy and like people never really leave us kind of thing and so um, but yeah, I don't know, I've always been kind of comforted by the idea that like this one night a year you can really be like this close to the spirit world, like that it's the lines just so thin. Um, and that's something I really love about Halloween. <laughs> I know that maybe sounds really, I feel really like weird saying that out loud. I feel like I have to pause and tell this ghost story because it's the closest I've ever come to like believing in ghosts. So I went to Scotland my sophomore year of college. Um, I went out there with a performing troupe and we did a show over the summer out there. And we did this uh, haunted 
you know, ghost tour of Edinburgh, which was actually a huge leap for me because <laughs> for somebody who loves Halloween, I'm scared of everything. Like I don't watch horror movies. I'm like <laughs> I'm super duper scaredy cat. And even though I don't like necessarily believe in ghosts, I was like, I don't know if I want to go in a bunch of like dark places at night. It, you know, normal human stuff. So we go on this ghost tour. Our host name is Darren. <laughs> and you know, they dress all like crypt keeper -y and they have like eyeliner. It's like really fun, actually. We had a great time. But we he takes us like under the streets of Edinburgh and we go in this like stone room and he's telling us about how they like cleaned the streets back in the, you know, times before plumbing and things like people were dumping like waste in the streets like human waste and so in order to like help with plague they decided to like basically move everybody underground and then like set the streets on fire to clear out all the waste but then of course the streets are like cobblestone and the people were under the road in these stone rooms and basically ended up kind of baking alive, um, <laughs> which is so horrible. And I like, who knows? I don't know if that's historically accurate or not. It's the story we were told. Um, but they have you stand in like a circle in this room holding hands and you're all facing in and Dotton is in the middle of the circle. So like there's nobody out around us except us. Um, now, if just I had felt something, I would have thought I had like spooked myself. But at the exact same moment, my friend Sarah and I like feel something like tug at our dresses or like coats. And we both go like ah! at the same time. And we felt like the same, like it was like a small, like short, you know, level hand, like a child. And our, our like leader was like, oh yeah, there's like, people say all the time there's a ghost of a child in this room. And so, yeah, that was super crazy. And like I said, I would have thought I imagined it if my friend Sarah hadn't felt it at the same moment I did. And that's, yeah, the closest I've ever come to believing in ghosts because I just like, I've thought about it a thousand times and I don't have an explanation for it. <laughs> I guess we should move on to the next one because I took kind of a long time on that. <sighs> this question killed me when I read it on Instagram. <laughs> It says, Beetlejuice or Hocus Pocus? Um, that's the worst question I've ever been asked in my entire life. As you can see, I love Beetlejuice. He's right here, little Lydia. It's, Beetlejuice is just an absolute, like, must for me. It's a classic. But Hocus Pocus is also the movie that introduced a generation to Bette Midler. You can't, like... I honestly don't know how to answer this question. They're not in the same category for me. But I guess like if I was held at gunpoint and I could only watch Beetlejuice or Hocus Pocus, one of them at Halloween for the rest of my life, I think I have to go with Hocus Pocus. And I can't even believe I'm saying that because I'm a huge Beetlejuice fan. Beetlejuice might be my favorite movie, even like in a non-Halloween sense. But Hocus Pocus has so many fond memories for me. I just have to like, that has to be it. <laughs> Ooh, y'all hurting me with these. Ooh, this was a good one. What do you think will be the most popular Halloween costumes in 2020? Okay, well, first and foremost, I think the most popular couples costume we're gonna see is uh, from this new shit show, Tiger King. Are you all watching this? It's insane. If you haven't watched Tiger King yet, like go waste some of your quarantine time on this absolute mess of a show. I'm fascinated. But I think for Halloween 2020, I think we're gonna see a lot of couples do a like um, Joe Exotic Carol Baskin costume thing. I really, like I guarantee that's gonna be a thing or like a family costume that's gonna be like a Joe Exotic Carol Baskin and like a baby tiger. <laughs> oh my God, I, I can't wait. Maybe Taylor and I'll do it. <laughs> Just. Uh, he would actually sign on for that couple's costume, I think, and Taylor doesn't like Halloween. <laughs> like more, I don't know, like more uh, things that have been popular. Like I bet we're still gonna be seeing a lot of like Sabrina's. Oh, Witcher, I think that came out after Halloween this year. Yeah, right? So I bet we're gonna be seeing a lot of people do, I don't even, is his name Jared? 
I don't even know. I bet we're gonna see a bunch of witcher costumes. If people wanted to be really topical, I could see people doing like rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> I think that would be funny. Like hopefully, hopefully by Halloween, this is all over. Oh my God, can you imagine if it wasn't? <sighs> But hopefully by the time Halloween rolls around, this will all be just like a distant memory and we can just kind of not laugh about it. That's definitely not the right words, but like, I think a toilet paper costume would be really topical and funny. I also think a dope couple's costume would be the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. <laughs> I think, I hope some people do that. I don't think that was around at Halloween last year. It seems like that came out around Christmas. So yeah. Um, those are the ones I can think of. I'm sure there are more. Leave leave comments down below if you already have your like costume ideas coming because I know for me it's like usually the day after Halloween I think of all these things I could have done. I'm like, ah, dang it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, favorite Halloween tradition as a kid and then my favorite Halloween tradition now. Um, so as a kid, I think that's that's part of the reason I said the that Hocus Pocus would win in that battle. <laughs> Watching Hocus Pocus is a real fuzzy memory for me. I always watched that with my parents every Halloween. I think that's probably my favorite like childhood tradition. I, that movie came out the year I was born. So it was very timely and like very much a part of my upbringing. Um, and I, I just, I've, I've always loved that movie. Like I said, it's Bette Midler. Like what is there to not like? Anyone who says they don't like that movie is just don't even, just don't. Favorite Halloween tradition as an adult? Um, I think I'm still looking for my adult Halloween traditions. This year, my friends and I had a dinner for the recently deceased at my place and everyone came as like their favorite dead person. <laughs> and that was really fun. I could see that becoming like a yearly thing that we do. I was Patsy Klein and my friend Nellie was Janis Joplin. She looks like Janis Joplin, so it was really cool. Uh, we have a George Harrison and uh, Audrey Hepburn and my husband went as Bob Ross. <laughs> um, my friend Katie was Freddie Mercury. Like it was really fun. We we had just a really good time with it. And uh, oh, my friend Bryson did Chris Farley. Yeah, it was just a really cool little start of something. So I actually kind of hope that's a tradition that sticks around. If you had to decorate with only one item, what would it be? This one I actually asked for clarification from the asker because <laughs> I was like, is, does this mean I can only decorate, like I can only put out one decoration or does it mean like I have multiples of something? And she said, it means you can have as many as you want of one type of thing. So that makes me feel a little bit better. Because <laughs> if I had to put out only one thing, I really don't know what it would be. I really don't know. Actually, yes, I do. I lied. I'm gonna say that answer too. This past year, I bought this giant carving, black wood carving statue thing of the Headless Horseman. It's my favorite Halloween thing I've ever bought. I love it so much. I, Sleepy Hollow in general, like that story is also just like really deeply rooted in family traditions for me. And I just, oh, I've always loved, 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 loved the Headless Horseman. So I think if I could only put out one thing, it would be that statue of the Headless Horseman. Um, but if I could only decorate with kind of one thing or like motif, that that's kind of a toss up for me. Cause like part of me wants to say jack-o'-lanterns cause I love them. Um, and I have like a pretty big collection of like these plasticky carved guys that I put like all over my mantle. And I just really like the way they look as a group. So yeah, I think maybe that, but I've also always wanted to decorate my whole house as kind of like a, like a skeleton theme, like black and white and just skulls everywhere. Um, so either like all skeletons or all jack-o'-lanterns, um, but that'd be two really different things because it'd either be like all black and white or like bright freaking orange <laughs> everywhere. Okay, next. Oh, favorite costume you ever wore? And then they asked a follow-up, what is your dream costume? Uh, this is a hard one. I've had a lot of really great costumes, um, both when I was growing up because my mom like made most of my costumes and they were always stupid cool. 
And I don't know, I have, man, like I said, when I was a kid, like I was, I dream of Jeannie, which was so cute. Um, I didn't really get it at the time, but now that I'm an adult, I look back, I was like, oh, girl, so cute. <laughs> I also, when I was like a teenage, like a tween, like probably 12 years old, um, my best friend and I wanted to go as punk skater grandmas. <laughs> I very specifically remember that's how we proposed the idea to our parents was punk skater grandmas um and so we like bought dresses from thrift stores like you know like big moo moos but then we put like skater hoodies on and my mom made us like tights around our neck that had tennis balls so we had like saggy boots <laughs> And uh, we had like these big grandma wigs with like curlers and then like backwards hats and we like rode like skateboards and scooters around the neighborhood. <laughs> it was really stupid, but we had fun doing it. As an adult, um, Taylor and I went uh, maybe our second year dating as Sweeney Todd and Mrs. Lovett. And I made those costumes basically from scratch and like stuff I found in thrift stores that I altered to make us look like them. Um, and those were, they were really, really cool. And it was fun because Taylor dressed up. Like I said, he's not really a big Halloween person. So that was fun. Oh wait, dream costume. I think it would just be something incredibly elaborate like, um, I have to imagine it would be something in a Victorian period. Like, I know last year I really, really wanted to get a Victorian era, like black and white striped gown and do like a giant Marie Antoinette Beetlejuice with like a giant, you know, tall green wig. And yeah, something, something crazy elaborate like that would probably be like my top choice um, or like an exact, replica of uh, Barbara Streisand's costume in Hello Dolly when she comes down the stairs. <laughs> like that gold dress with the feathers. Something like that. Uh, your favorite decoration that you own. Uh, we already kind of covered that actually. I think it really is right now that uh, that giant Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman statue. Uh, I went out in like search of that this year. I saw it on Jade the Libra's channel, which if you're needing somebody to binge watch uh, during this weird time and you are a Halloween nerd, Jade the Libra, uh, like J-A-D-E the Libra on YouTube. Um, she's actually from my neck of the woods. She's from Overland Park. And I really hope that someday I get the chance to meet her because she lives like 15 minutes from me somewhere. <laughs> I see her like on her shopping vlogs going places and I'm like, I know where that is. I know where that is. Yeah, but she f had it in one of her decor halls and she got it at Home Goods and I was like, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find it. <laughs> and I went on like a hunt. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram at Kaylin Elise, then you um, probably watched my saga this past year also trying to find those crazy plants from Target and the, the ghoulish garden line they did this past year. I ended up getting basically all of those as well and I really love them. But that Headless Horseman's just like, it's got me. I love Sleepy Hollow shit. I love it so much. Okay. Favorite Halloween song? Ooh. Hmm. I mean, I know it's not technically a Halloween song, but I love the, uh, Oh, what's it actually? Jump in the Line by Harry Belafonte <laughs> from Beetlejuice. Um, it makes me think of Halloween. It's not really a Halloween song, um, but actually like true Halloween song, probably like the Addams Family theme. It just makes me happy when I hear it or like the Monsters theme. Um, yeah, those are just like feel good. Like, oh, Halloween time. <laughs> My family used to have a cassette that we'd listen to on at Halloween dinner. It always had like all the like corny Halloween songs like Ghostbusters and uh, that one was like, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Werewolves of London, that one's trash. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's your drug of choice. Favorite Halloween movie? Uh, again, I watch Hocus Pocus every year with my family. Um, 
but I am also just a like grade A die hard Tim Burton fan. I have been as long as I can remember. The first Tim Burton movie I ever saw was Corpse Bride, uh, which I think is just an incredible film, regardless of time of year. <laughs> Tim Burton has this really just like perfect way of storytelling that is really just like gets to the heart of what makes people human. <laughs> and I don't know, I love, I love all of his films. I love Corpse Bride. I love Sleepy Hollow. I love Beetlejuice, obviously. Um, I love Edward Scissorhands so much. Uh, it's just, he's, he's an incredible storyteller. And so his whole filmography falls into that category for me. But again, they're kind of like year round favorites. Uh, Hocus Pocus, I only watch at Halloween time. <laughs> this one just said ghosts or toast which I guess means like, would I prefer ghosts or toast, the food? I would like to have toast with a ghost and see if they eat it, if crumbs would fall out of them. Do you need my cat for your video? Yes. Favorite Halloween candy? I love Kit Kats. I love, love, love Kit Kats. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I love Kit Kats so much. They're the like first candy I pick out of, like I dig through everything to find the Kit Kats. Haunted House or Apple Orchard? Apple Orchard a thousand percent because like I said earlier, I'm a big freaking scaredy cat and I'm terrified of haunted houses. I've only been one time I went in high school with some of my best friends and I had a terrible time. <laughs> um, the only one I enjoyed, we went into the Chambers of Poe in Kansas City, which is like every room is a different Edgar Allan Poe poem. And that was really cool just like for that aspect because I'm a huge Poe nerd and I, I loved the literature aspect. <laughs> Uh, but everything else about that whole experience was terrible and I would not do it again. I'm claustrophobic. I hate the dark. I hate loud noises. Like haunted houses are just a nightmare for me. So yeah, 100% love an apple orchard, love picking apples, hay rides, cider. If you live around my area in KC, if you go to the Lewisburg Cider Mill, their donuts are mm, so good. Apple Orchard 100% of the time. <laughs> What's our last one? Oh, and this was actually my favorite question. This came from Penny Snark, who, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. She's the actual Halloween queen. I love her so much. Um, her question was, what is your favorite symbol of Halloween? I think that's just a great question. Um, I'm going to say jack-o'-lanterns um because like i said i love i love the story behind them if you're not familiar so like jack-o'-lanterns the idea was that there was this it's an irish like celtic folklore that uh stingy jack was this like manipulator and bar really greedy borrower like and he basically like tricked the devil and he kept tricking the devil and the devil like couldn't collect his soul for another year, another year, another year. Um, and then eventually Jack died and the God like was like, no. And then the devil didn't want him either. Didn't want to come collect his soul because he had tricked him so many times. And so they like as punishment basically gave him this one single burning coal to like light his way through kind of purgatory forever. And he like hollowed out a turnip and put the coal inside and held it like a lantern and just like wandered for eternity. So that's the history behind the jack-o'-lantern. And um, so people used to carve like faces and like turnips and things. Um, and then it eventually evolved into the pumpkin. So the idea now is that you, you light them and you put them out and it, it wards off any evil spirits from coming into your home. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just like check to make sure we don't have any new questions that have come our way. Spooky movies versus scary movies, discuss. <laughs> like I said, hate scary movies. I do not like them. I don't like horror. Now, 
Alternatively, I do love a good slasher film. Like, I, I like the Halloween movies. I like, like, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, fun, weird side fact, my uncle was actually the star of Nightmare on Elm Street 2. <laughs> so, uh, grew up kind of appreciating that franchise. But, yeah, I don't, I don't like a true scary movie. Um, but I love spooky movies. I think there's weirdly something really like kind of romantic about spooky things, like eerie stuff. Um, again, it's the same reason I love Tim Burton. He puts those things like right alongside every other human emotion and it's very natural, I think. I think as humans we, like fear is a natural part of our daily lives and so it's kind of beautiful to see it played out that way. So I'm gonna end it there. I hope that this has been fun for you in a weird way. I <laughs> hope you've enjoyed our hallow, no, what is it, quarantine <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed thinking about Halloween time and uh, just having my decor out, enjoying it a little bit. It's a scary time in the world and you know that quote in The Office where Robert California says, it's funny, isn't it, how we have a, we take a year out or day out every year and celebrate fear. <laughs> um, that's kind of like what it's all about, isn't it? Like that's what makes us human, is that we all do feel afraid sometimes and it's okay that we're all feeling a little afraid right now. We can all just agree that it's okay to be scared and we'll just sit here and wait it out together and know that this isn't forever and We'll come out on the other side and we'll be okay. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, um, please hit the subscribe button. I am trying to be more consistent about uploading, especially now that I'm, you know, gonna be home more. <laughs> so uh, thank you all so much for being here. I love having you and I will see you next time. Happy quarantine week.